ever interested as there were new opportunities for commerce, the Saxon crossed the Carpathians over to Wallachia and Moldavia, apparently on their own initiative. That is how Kampulung in Wallachia and Baia in Moldavia were founded, for example. Romanians promptly populated these towns, but the initial organization was German. They had a sort of mayor, uh, who could be Saxon, Hungarian or Romanian, and we can still find Catholic churches from that time. As it turns out, we were not very far from having a Saxon urban population in the two voivode ships, as was the case in Transylvania. As I mentioned before, towns sprung up along the main trade routes that crossed our country from the Danube and Black Sea towards Hungary and Poland and further on the Central and Western Europe. They also appeared as a result of local trade as the population grew and the sparsely populated southeastern regions of both Danubian voivode ships got more and more inhabitants. Our towns began to prosper and, in the beginning, our voivodes grew rich, that is, until the Turks took our ports on the Danube and the Black Sea. At that time, trade routes between Asia and Europe passed through our lands because trading in the Mediterranean had become too hazardous since the Arabs had conquered its entire southern shore in the 8th century, and especially after the Turks destroyed the Byzantine Empire and occupied half of the northern shore. Merchants consequently switched to the land and river routes, starting from the Black Sea port and inland to Central Europe. Some of the main stops on this route were Brasov and Sibiu in Transylvania and Lvov in Poland. Direct maritime trade between the Orient and Europe would not be resumed until the 16th century after the Portuguese discovered the route around the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa. It was the same daring quest that would eventually lead Columbus to the discovery of America. But what precious goods were they trading over such distances? Westerners were mainly after silk, precious stones and spices, especially pepper, which was in such demand in medieval times that it became as good as hard currency. You could buy this many yards of cloth for this many ounces of pepper and so on. In return, countries like England, Flanders, France, Germany and Italy traded weapons, tools, clothes, etc. The arrival of the Turks, which we'll discuss shortly, would drain the treasuries of our voivode ships as our rulers were no longer in a position to collect taxes from the transit of goods through their territories. Our recently established towns living off the medieval intercontinental trade routes begin their steady decline.